everyone come on way to use a phrase that's a favorite at at first parish bedford it's not like this every sunday um and in this case it's not like this music sunday every year um this has been an interesting journey um as most of you know music sunday is a a real highlight for many people especially all the different musicians that we have in our congregation. Um, this year, it's a little different. This year, it's more of a retrospective of the past 15 years that I've been music director here. Um, but I'd like to emphasize, this is not centered around me. This is centered around all those instruments and those voices that you hear. Um, as I said, when I played music on uh, from the Beethoven Sunday a few years back on Good Friday, um, you're going to hear voices that are no longer with us. Some have moved away. Um, some no longer sing with the choir because of various reasons. Some have passed away. That goes also with uh, some of the instrumental issue here. First Parish is very lucky in that we have a large pool of instrumentalists and you've heard them over the past few weeks and you're going to keep hearing them over the coming weeks and so these recordings they're not about me they're about first parish they're about you they're about all the voices all the people who are here all of us who love music so welcome welcome to everyone who is here and listening this morning and thank you deb for finally getting that piece fired up it was a great way to start the service, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So I also want to give you a few announcements of what's coming up in the coming week. Um, be sure to go to the First Parish website. Uh, First Parish is continuing to function sort of almost as normal. There's a whole list of activities and meetings uh, ways to check in. Go to the website, check it out. Let John, Annie, Deb, me, Janet, all of us, we want to hear from you. We want you to be there and we want to be there for you. Also, this coming Tuesday, as in the past couple of weeks, in collaboration with the Bedford Research Foundation, COVID 19 testing at First Parish will continue on Tuesday from 10.30 to 2.30. Testing is open to everyone, regardless of town, of residence, symptomology, affiliation, or ability to pay. Those waiting to be tested must pre-register online and will be given a time slot and a number. There are no walk-ins. The address for pre-registration is in the chat box and a link is in today's online Bedford Citizen. Registration closes at noon on Monday, that's tomorrow, or when capacity is reached. Thereafter, the same registration link will be available for appointments on the following Tuesday, which is May 12th. I'm going to do the unison affirmation with everyone, but after that, um, John is going to do our first reading, and he's also going to give you a stewardship update. But let's do the unison affirmation. You may either stand or stay seated, and let's do this together. Annie, can you open everyone's mics? And 
Here we go. Bob, Bob is the spirit, spirit of this church. Of this church. church. Service. Service. Yes, it's its law. law. This is our great, yes. our great, great covenant. covenant. All, together All together in peace, in peace, in, peace. in truth, in love, love. Help, help one, one another. another. El amor es el espíritu de esta iglesia. De esta iglesia. El servicio es un beso. Es nuestro gran pacto. John, it's yours. Indeed it is, and welcome and good morning, everybody. Uh, the one other announcement does have to do with stewardship, and let me find it here for you. If you have not yet done so, we ask that you respond to our stewardship appeal by the end of the day today. Everyone on our Parish Biz email list has received several updates, including one sent last evening. If you're not on our parish biz list, you really should be. Our parish administrator can sign you up at office at uubedford.org. While responses have been truly generous in this uncertain time, we have only received responses from half of our anticipated 300 pledges. We have quite a ways still to go. Those who have not made their pledge by today will be contacted individually by our stewardship committee. And so by responding today, you save the committee a lot of work and you help all of us to sleep better at night. And that is really what we want. Okay, on to some opening words. And these opening words come from the writings of Anne Sexton, her poem, Welcome morning. There is joy in all, in the hair I brush each morning, in the cannon towel newly washed that I rub my body with each morning, in the chapel of eggs I cook each morning, in the outcry from the kettle that heats my coffee each morning, in the spoon and the chair that cry, hello there, Anne, each morning, in the godhead of the table that I set my silver plate cup upon each morning. All this is God right here in my pea green house each morning, and I mean though often forget to give thanks, to faint down by the kitchen table in a prayer of rejoicing as the holy birds at the kitchen window peck into their marriage of seeds. So while I think of it, let me paint a thank you on my palm for this God, this laughter of the morning, lest it go unspoken. The joy that isn't shared, I've heard, dies young. So be it. Good morning. Today I can easily reflect on what would have been a wonderful occasion, another Music Sunday. I love these services. There is always glorious music and a theme with appropriate and meaningful words to tie the music to our lives. But when Brad asked me to say today what music at First Parish means to me, I did think twice. Actually, I balked. Public speaking is definitely not for me. But then I thought back to another time, way back to another time, when there was much debate here about getting a grand piano. 
Back then, at a crowded meeting in the Bacon Room, I was inspired to speak, to make a heartfelt, spontaneous plea for the piano. Music in our services has always been very special for me, and I felt that having a good piano was a must for enabling the music program to grow. And it has, especially under the leadership of Brad Connor. You have only to look at the photos on the CDs of the earliest Music Sundays to see how much the choir has grown. On this Music Sunday, our splendid choir would be singing Beethoven in his 250th birthday year. Brad would be conducting an orchestra with our wonderful band of First Parish musicians joined by our fine colleagues from the area. It would be a beautiful and special service. There is so much music happening at First Parish. When I tell people that playing here, music, playing music here is a huge part of my musical life and joy, my enthusiasm, my enthusiasm often draws an amused smile. But I always go on to elaborate. I feel lucky to be playing music with excellent First Parish musicians who have become my friends. I love the camaraderie that is rehearsing and performing for any service, for Music Sunday, for Christmas Eve, or for a Sunday afternoon concert, all here at First Parish. I am excited by the variety of music that we offer here. Diverse chamber music groups, solos with piano, duets, organ, a choir and soloists, kids choirs, vocal quartet, concerts with our own musicians or with outside groups, folk music, jazz, and Steve. No explanation needed. Something you may not know, in keeping with the ideals of First Parish, much of the music that has started here has left the building. Many of us who play and sing on Sunday mornings have taken our programs to diverse venues. Bedford Council on Aging, Carlton Willard, First Parish Lexington, King's Chapel in Boston, to name just a few. Of course, I can think of my own special moments, way too many to recall here. I love playing anything with Brad and Liz. I love playing with the choir and soloists. I love Go Down Moses. The Beatles and Gershwin Music Sundays. Dean Grove's own music concert. The Berlioz Trio for Flutes and Harp on Christmas Eve. And of course, Silent Night. There have been so many renditions of Silent Night, but I particularly loved playing it on my eight key wooden flute to sound like a shepherd and playing it as a duet with Liz. I love the spirit of this church and its music. I deeply appreciate the musical leadership, the vision, and the music choices. For me, First Parish is a rich and vibrant musical home. Carol, thank you for doing that. Um, so, uh, before we start the next piece of music, I want to sort of elaborate on that. First of all, since you're home, you can clap all you want for any musical piece you want or any person speaking because guess what? It doesn't disturb anybody. We can't hear you. So if you want to just act out, just go ahead and do it. You know, the original title of, <laughs> I love this acting out, that's good. Um, the original title of this morning's service was Joy. Um, I planned it many months ago. I had no idea where we'd be at this point in time. And so the theme for services for this month, the theme for services ever since this started a few weeks ago, eight weeks ago now, um, has been hope. And so instead of just joy, this is joy amongst hope because Joy does give us hope. It gives us hope for the next day, for getting up the next day. The birds singing, the flowers blooming, the greens. It's here. It gives us some hope. We may still be inside, but we know it's there. And so I want to talk about the relation of 
the prelude and the next piece that's being played. The prelude was from the very first Music Sunday I did at First Parish. It was from a Mozart mass. There were, when I came to First Parish, I was handed a list of 13 names of people who were in the choir. By the end of that year for that recording, we had 19 people. That was all 19 people. And again, it was by Mozart. The next recording we're gonna play is 10 years later and it's 33 people. So yes, the choir has grown. Carol hit it right. Um, the choir's gotten better, frankly. But why the next piece? The next piece is the Lacrimosa from Mozart's Requiem. And why such a sad piece on a Sunday that's supposed to be joyful? Because sometimes the only way to appreciate joy is to acknowledge sadness in the world. And that's what this piece is all about. Deb, go ahead.
Good morning. Uh, we're Vern and Vicki Goff, and Brad kind of asked us to talk a little bit about our journey to the First Parish Choir. Um, while we're new members of the church and very new members of the choir, um, we've had a long affiliation with First Parish, and we were first introduced to your music program about 12 years ago. I got a call from our daughter, Kath, inviting us to attend a service to hear kids sing. Now, the backstory is we were very active members of our church choir. We sang every Sunday, and it was a small choir, so we really didn't like to miss service. So she kind of coached the invitation as Abby would really like Omi and Papa to hear her sing. So what does a grandparent do? But of course, come to First Parish. Since that time, 12 years ago, we've attended many services to hear our grandchildren, Abby and Julian sing. We've been to Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Twinderella, and over the years, we've come to appreciate the wonderful place the music program had in our grandchildren's life, as well as we really could see this was a congregation that supports music wholeheartedly, and music is a huge part of the service. So when we came to First Parish two years ago, the choir was just a natural fit. Going on from there, uh, I uh, need to explain a little bit that we came from a church in Sterling, Megan knows about this, that uh, at the time was Baptist Congregational Unitarian. So it was a little bit different from uh, First Parish. And I often said when we were singing that choir was the most fun you could have at church. I'm not sure that's quite as true in Bedford here. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, you see. <laughs> uh, one, of, one of the fun things that we did in the choir uh, that kind of started spontaneously is our choir director was a, a woman who was divorced and single, and we had one fellow that sang in the back row with the basses. They had us in pews, so we were segregated. The, 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 the guys making jokes were in the back. Um, and uh, you could tell, looking at these two, that they were interested in each other. You can always tell. <laughs> and uh, finally, one night after choir, uh, which was a Friday night, I said to them, well, you know, why don't we go out to the local pub for a, for a pop together? And that was all they needed. Apparently, they were afraid to be seen in public together uh, in that rumors would fly. But having a chaperone made it OK. That uh, gathering grew to most of the choir for a number of years and we'd all look forward to getting together after choir and uh, letting our hair down and visiting and enjoying each other. The, uh, the choir is one way that we can work together to get acquainted and it certainly worked in spades. If you know of Davis Farmland, the fellow in the back row was John Davis of Davis Farmland. Uh, our story in getting acquainted with uh, the first parish was that uh, my mother was a member here for a long time and was at Carlton Willard also. When my daughter and her husband, Andrew, graduated from school, Kath and Andrew were looking for a place to stay. And my mother said, well, I'll call a church. She talked to the church secretary who said, well, you know, uh, I think it's Dave Ellis has an apartment he's just finishing up. And that was perfect. That put them near to the church and uh, they became very active in the church even after they moved to Chelmsford and came back to Bedford. So as I look at it now, I was thinking, gee, we were uh, many generations, probably eight at the church in Sterling, but this makes us four generations here in Bedford, which is a great joy. We're having a wonderful time. We're appreciating the, the uh, well, probably a little less rigid structure of the first parish <laughs> and, and grateful and joyful to be here and to be able to share. Thank you.
Yeah. <laughs> so Annie, Annie wrote in the middle of that, she said, are Zoom, Zoom, Zoom really the lyrics? And yes, the lyrics are really Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Um, one of the things that, that I've tried to do since I've been at First Parish is make sure that we acknowledge not only the singers and the instrumentalists, but those who compose and arrange. And we've done works by Janet Welby and a couple of other in-house composers. And that one was arranged, as you saw in the picture, by our very own Dean Groves. And um, it was a lot of fun to do because you know, over the last 15 years, the choir really has covered the bases as far as types of music, which Carol Eppel talked about. Um, they've also addressed things like climate justice. Um, they've done a Sunday on Roma music um, in order to honor our partner church. Um, we have honored people like Martin Luther King, and Harvey Milk, gay issues, African-American issues. We've done folk music, we've done jazz, we've done swing, we've done classical, I could go on. And you know what? The choir has come with me on that journey. And again, this Sunday isn't about me, it's about them. It's about the instrumentalists, it's about First Parish, because you know what? What other church in the area would put up with all of this. So thank you each and every one for being so supportive. Um, for the next number, it's a combined choir number. It comes from 2014. Uh, it is from a Sunday that was dedicated to nature and to climate justice. It's Under the Sea from The Little Mermaid. It has Janet Welby and the Senior Youth Choir joining the adults. It's absolutely so much fun. The soloist was Caitlin Dukes, who is now in college, or is she old enough to be out of college? Ugh, time flies, doesn't it? Um, and then being who I am, while Steve Sussman was playing the piano, if you know the song, it has a sound of steel pans, steel drums, steel pans. And so I did a lot of research and found one of the best steel pan players in the Boston area. And he came in and provided the accompaniment along with a lot of our own musicians. So let's go under the sea, Deb, and let's get it started.
it seems to be back to me here. And someone once uh, said that music is humanity's gift to itself. And it has been such a gift to have our choir and our musicians, our many choirs and our many musicians. Uh, it's been an extraordinary piece of, of uh, the first parish identity. Uh, this reading to uh, introduce our offertory uh, is uh, from the writings of, of James Baldwin. He says, it is rare indeed that people give. Most people guard and keep. They suppose that it is they themselves and what they identify with themselves that they are guarding and keeping, whereas what they are actually guarding and keeping is their system of reality and what they assume themselves to be. One can give nothing whatever without giving oneself. That is to say, risking oneself. If one cannot risk oneself, then one is simply incapable of giving. And of course, there are so many ways of risking oneself, but one way of risking oneself is by going to that Give Plus button on our homepage. Try that one out if you haven't tried that. And again, if you haven't filled out a pledge card for the coming year, we hope you'll be able to do that today. Freely we have received, freely give for the good work of this religious community within and far, far beyond our walls. Our offering will now gratefully be received. So be it.
reading to share with you. As an undergraduate student, I was an English major and I uh, paid particular attention to the Romantic and Victorian poets. And this is one of my favorite uh, poems by Percy Shelley, um, which I have trimmed a bit, uh, but which for me embodies uh, joy. To Jane, the invitation. Best and brightest come away, fairer far than this fair day, which like thee to those in sorrow comes to bid a sweet good morrow to the rough year just awake in its cradle on the break. The brightest hour of unborn spring through the winter wandering found it seems the halcyon morn to hoar February born. Bending from heaven in azure mirth, it kissed the forehead of the earth and smiled upon the silent sea and bade the frozen streams be free. Away, away from men and towns to the wild wood and the downs, to the silent wilderness where the soul need not repress its music lest it should not find an echo in another's mind. While the touch of nature's art harmonizes heart to heart, I leave this notice on my door for each accustomed visitor. I am gone into the fields to take what this sweet hour yields, expectation to be off. Today is for itself enough. Radiant sister of the day, awake, arise, and come away. When the night is left behind in the deep east, dun and blind, and the blue noon is over us, and the multitudinous billows murmur at our feet, where the earth and ocean meet, and all things seem only one in the universal sun. Thank you, Deb, that was beautiful. So I'm going to talk about the pieces of music that are remaining. Let's go backwards. We're gonna end with the end of the Beatles service that we did a few years back. And why is that? Do you all love the Beatles? Can we have a thumbs up for that? Yep. Not only that, in all the years I've been at First Parish, if you had to ask me about hope and joy, that service ended with hope and joy in abundance. And so that's what we're going to end with. But I'd also like to point out that in these last three recordings, We've got a number of soloists. In the final recording, the soloists, um, one is a guy by the name of Adam Sutton who grew up in Bedford, and I brought him back to sing with us. Corlin Simmons had sung with us on our Martin Luther King service years before, and he did a great job in the long and winding road. And then our own, very own Cynthia Moore, she sang, and you'll probably also hear Ben Sears in there whooping it up because he really got into it. But in any case, it was a joyful morning, and that's how we're going to end this morning. Before that, talking about soloists, uh, a couple of years ago, we did the Gounod Messe Solennelle, and a lot of people didn't know it, but it gave me a chance to bring back one of our favorite soloists, who is Davron Monroe. Davron has a spectacular voice. We love singing with him and every time he's come in, he brings the house down. And the year before he had sung, It Ain't Necessarily So. And let me tell you, the Sanctus is a lot different from that. But the next recording is uh, from a Christmas Eve, not from a Music Sunday. and. At that time, we had a very good soloist named Rachel Luther. 
Rachel is now working at other churches. She's been hired and she's making a living as a musician. But it gives me a chance to say, while we focus on Music Sunday this morning, Christmas Eve is just as joyous. Regular Sundays are just as joyous. The Tylers come in and we hear Bob and Fran, they serenade us on a Sunday morning. They're going to do that next week. And we're very lucky here at First Parish. So for our very next piece, we're going to hear a, a couple of pieces from Christmas Eve that I remember when they were over, John Gibbons stood up at the mic, turned around to the choir and said, wow. Looks like I'm up. Um, Brad asked me to speak about uh, the joy of music 
And so I wanted to share with everybody the joy of music or why being part of music at First Parish means the world to me. Music was a big part of my growing up. My family attended the First Presbyterian Church of East Cleveland in Ohio. Both of my parents sang in the choir and my sibs and I sang in the youth choir under the direction of a guy named Ed Payne. He was very lively and engaging. And after church, we'd often regale with glee stories of him stomping his foot on the floor of the church classroom to get us all to follow the tempo. We also took piano lessons from our church organist. And in school, I sang in choirs, took flute lessons. I listened to my AM radio on my little handheld transistor radio, learning and memorizing the songs and lyrics. And I remember my dad introducing me to swing and big band music. And I'd sit for hours at the piano with my mom. We'd harmonize together while she played songs from the book of Camelot and West Side Story. From early on, music was part of the fabric of growing up and I was hooked. I used to tell my daughter as a child that books and music were free. You could have them anytime anytime you wanted by simply going to the library, singing a song in the shower. And that was always the case in our house. And then we started coming to First Parish and we learned about kids sing. So we quickly signed our daughter up with Carol Hamilton and then she got hooked. Then one day after church, I attended a membership committee luncheon for newcomers. I heard Sandra Seitz give a plug for the choir. If there are any altos out there, come on Thursday night at 7.30. So I did, and I was hooked. Not long after joining the choir, we were blessed to hook Brad. And early on, he sent around a survey to find out what kind of music the folks in the choir liked. The responses were varied from early music to show tunes, jazz, contemporary music, and you know what? We've done it all. Some of it has been a big stretch too. I'd laugh and I'd tell Diane Marston, I couldn't hit that note if I had a stepladder. And then fast forward to dress rehearsal for Copeland Music Sunday and suddenly I find myself up in the stratosphere. Well, for me anyway, and then holding a note for a week and a half. What a rush. You know what else is a rush? Getting to sit next to Robert Noble or Dan Bostwick in the back row of the choir when we're all jammed up on the chancel for Christmas Eve or Music Sunday. Honestly, it's like dessert in your ear. And it's therapy. I never leave Thursday night rehearsal without feeling good. Of course, you pump that much air and endorphins into your body and you can't help but feel buoyed. But it's the friendships and looking around the room and knowing each and every person has your back. It's the parties and the potlucks. And did I mention that some of the best cooks in the church are also involved in music at First Parish? Music at this church has even led me to make friends in faraway places. Last fall, Brad brought the Bath Male Choir here for a stop on their tour. What a concert that was. And at the potluck afterward, we got to spend more time with the guys and their wives, and we stay in touch with them to this day. You know, the pandemic has changed so many things about our lives, some possibly forever, but it cannot and will not take music away from us. Cherish it. Sing in the shower, even if you think you can't hold a tune for music will endure here at First Parish and in the world around you. And when you listen or sing and it brings joy to your heart, say a simple thank you.
have some closing words to share with you this morning. And this is from a longer piece called Maybe Happiness by Adrienne Marie Brown. Be smaller. Start small. Be small. I am happiest when I let my life be contained within my body, listening to my needs and letting myself follow the impulses of care and connection. Current life requires such projection, such a massive scale of oversharing and trying to change strangers through the internet and attend to massive crises. We can live our whole lives as minds, worried, thinking, untethered. Large scale sometimes still happens when you're being small, but it's more deeply sourced and doesn't create the same level of attachment. When you're small, your discernment is about the authenticity of the care, the real person you can be and feel in each connection. Be smaller. And with that, friends, I wish you to go enjoy, to go staying in your bodies, delighting in the music and the sunshine and any pleasure you can find in this day and going forward. I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing there in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Oh